is extremely dangerous. And when I return, I'll talk about the retrovirus in the White House in cahoots with the radical Catholic in the Vatican right here on The Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. You know, I... We are talking about the dangerous times we live in where the um, retrovirus in the White House is so out of control and so drunk on his power that on Friday he announces 10,000 Muslims will be brought in from Syria. Then by Saturday morning, it's 100,000. By Sunday morning, it's 200,000. And the drunk on the other side of the aisle doesn't even belch. Not a word from, from Bain of the drunk. Just uh, dancing around on the fundraising circuit. The Republicans are worthless. I don't understand the Republican Party. I mean, there are women out there who write to me who are Republicans. Do you not know what your own party has become? How could you not revolt? Then you have the Catholics. Where are the educated Catholics to stand up to this radical Catholicism that has emerged under the Jesuit Pope? Now, I want to go back to the big story of immigration for one minute. Here's the best thing ever written on it. Immigrants helped build this country into the greatest nation on earth. I believe that every human being has a natural right to leave the country he or she is born in and seek a better life in another. But that right has the same natural limit that all rights have. Quote, the limits drawn around us by the equal rights of others, close quote, as Jefferson so eloquently put it. Among other things, that means you do not have a right to immigrate to another country carrying a potentially deadly disease that could harm the people living there. You don't have a right to enter the country illegally and subvert its constitution. Most obviously, you don't have a right to immigrate into a country for the express purpose of killing its citizens or, or overthrowing its government. And then I talk about the flood of illegals from the southern border and why they're importing voters like this who are ignorant of the language, especially voters from Muslim and socialist countries, to kill us slowly through the erosion of our legal traditions, language, and culture, all in government zero, only available on Amazon now. Sorry to tell you. I'll be back to talk about the Jesuit. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. All right, now we're going to turn to uh, Zero Religion, or Lenin's Pope, in Chapter 8 of Government Zero, my forthcoming book. And I'll, I'll read you pieces of it because I think it's very well written and there's information you've never heard anywhere before. But I hope you didn't miss what I said about immigration because no one has said what I said as succinctly or as perfectly. Everyone has something to say about illegal immigration, but no one said it like I did and as succinctly. Immigrants help build this country into the greatest nation on earth. That's a given. I believe that every human being has a natural right to leave the country he or she is born in and seek a better life in another. That's a given, except in Cuba and North Korea where well, you can't leave. That's why the Pope fits right into Cuba. That's why Obama loves Cuba, because no one can leave it. But then I go on and say, but that right has the same natural limit that all rights have, which is the limits drawn around us by the equal rights of others, as Jefferson so eloquently put it. Do you understand that? Has anyone ever said that? No, Michael Savage did. Now let's move on to zero religion, Lenin's Pope. But before we do, I'm going to show you that the Pope is actually conducting a war on actual religion. I know that's a paradox for many of you true believers, but you don't understand it. The leftist mentality that the Pope is espousing is actually a war on religion itself. He may not even understand it. He looks like he's half senile to me. He's reading the, uh, the writings of lunatics that are around him. And as far as I'm concerned, I don't even think it's coming from him. We even have the names in Lenin's Pope of who's writing this, these leftist encyclicals for him. They have names. They're lifetime Marxists, they're not even religious. They practice whatever they practice, who knows what. So before we begin, we have to go to the Republican debates where one of the shallowest men in, in, in the history of, the, of politics uh, was up on the stage with the others. A, a, a child named Marco Rubio, sounds like a child, speaks like a child. Listen to this childish idi idiocy 
that he espoused over the weekend about the, uh, I think this was about uh, the Pope. Go ahead. Well, I'm a Roman Catholic. For me, the Pope is a successor of Peter. He's the spiritual head of the church who has authority to speak on matters, do doctrinal matters and, uh, and theological matters. And I follow him 100% on those issues. Otherwise, I wouldn't be a Roman Catholic. And, and so I believe that deeply. The Pope as an individual, an important figure in the world, also has political opinions. And those, of course, we are free to disagree with. He obviously opines about his views of uh, the, the church's role or the, what we should be doing with the climate or things of this nature on the economics. Those are issues that, uh, that the church talks about as regards to their social teachings, or their, their, sorry, the, the way you balance government with society. On the social teachings... Turn them I can't even listen to this. If he was a student of mine, I would, I would send them out for a shot of, it, of Ritalin. Uh, I'd say, look, you better go visit the school psychologist. Your medication is low. By the way, the sound was hard to listen to because it was a dual, dual track. I heard music actually behind it. Am I imagining that, Robert? Was there music playing behind the, that piece? I couldn't believe what I was listening to. Oh, background noise from the network. Okay. Okay. Zero religion, Lenin's Pope from Government Zero. I'll read you a paragraph because the book is only available on Amazon. Where do I begin? Hitler's Pope, well, I actually talked about that. And I defended Pope Benedict XVI, by the way. Did you know that? Did you know that I, Michael Savage, defended Pope Benedict XVI? And I talked about how the left smeared that Pope. So I am a great admirer of the Catholic religion. And I can tell that there are differences, I tell you there are many differences between one Pope to the other. And he was a wonderful pope. Pope Pius saved many Jews from the Holocaust. He was actually called the mouthpiece of Jewish war criminals by the Nazis themselves. And he was mourned as a hero by Jews all over the world upon his death in 1958, something that many Jews don't know today. Pius was mourned by a, as a hero by Jews all over the world upon his death. That's something that the uh, professional Jewish organizations don't even know themselves. So I said the leftists attacked him. They called him Hitler's Pope. And that was to drive their agenda to the left. And I said that the Pope and his influence over billions of Catholics stands in the way of their plans for a godless socialist world order. So in addition to attacking religion in every public space, they attack the Pope when doing so meets their needs. That was then, this is now. And here's where I go, politicizing the papacy, papacy. That has certainly not been the case with Pope Francis. Pope Francis is different because he is not a spiritual leader. He is a political operative with all the earmarks of having been handpicked for his office the way French President Francois Hollande or our own dear leader Obama was picked for theirs. It wouldn't be the first time the Vatican has been occupied by a political rather than a spiritual leader. The papacy is 2,000 years old. It has had good periods and bad periods, as has any long-standing institution run by imperfect human beings. There were popes who were honest, wise, and deeply spiritual, and others who were morons, scoundrels, or worse. There were times when the papacy was the spiritual center of the Catholic faith, and times when it was little more than a political office, complete with rule over large areas of land and armies commanded by the pope to enforce that rule. Pope John XII was definitely an example of the latter. He was simultaneously the secular prince of Rome and the pope, but he acted more like the pagan Roman emperor Caligula. He was accused of turning the sacred palace into a whorehouse, fornicating with several women there, including his own niece, and then blinding his confessor. He put deviant liberals in Hollywood to shame. Pope John was eventually deposed as both ruler of Rome and pope, but subsequently regained both offices brutally mutilating prisoners captured in his victory. He is said to have died in the act of committing adultery. Pope Benedict IX was also accused of rape, murder, and other atrocities, while Pope Boniface VIII demolished several towns while feuding with a powerful family. The ironically named Pope Innocent IV tortured heretics, including Galileo, for the heresy of claiming the earth revolved around the sun. Were the church not nourished by the Holy Spirit, it might never have survived some of its darker times. But it did survive. And in modern times, the church and the papacy have concerned themselves much more with saving souls than politics. That's not to say the Pope should have no political opinions at all. Pope Pius XI, who was actually the sitting Pope 
when the Reichskondorat was signed, said, quote, when politics come near the altar, then religion, the church, the pontiff have not only the right, but the duty to give direction and indications to be followed by Catholics. When politics come near the altar means when governments infringe upon or attempt to influence the church on spiritual matters. That's precisely the opposite of the Pope using his position as spiritual leader to influence politics, but that's what Pope Francis has been doing. Not only has he abused the trust placed in him for political purposes, he sold out to the socialists who'd love to abolish all religion if they could get away with it. Pope Pius the 12th was wrongly called Hitler's Pope. The charge didn't fit the facts, as the author who wrote the book eventually admitted himself. But Pope Francis can very appropriately be called Lenin's Pope. Let's consider the facts supporting that charge. And I'll pause right there from Government Zero, and I'll let you buy the book and give it to a Catholic friend. In fact, if it was a just world, as many intelligent Catholics, as there are intelligent Mormons who bought another talker's books in the millions because they at least put their money where their mouth is. I can't say that for my Jewish listeners who, so far as I know, have not supported me very well. I would beg my Catholic listeners who know what this Pope is to make certain that you buy a copy for a Catholic friend who does not know who this Pope is before it is too late. Government Zero on Amazon. That's all I can say. All I can do is write the book. No one has written as succinctly as I have what we're facing right now. And I knew this day would come. I knew this man would come here. I knew that he would sway millions with his mesmerizing powers. I knew that politicians would get on their hands and knees and bow down to him. And I knew there'd be very few voices of protest. I raised my voice in protest against this, this most dangerous most dangerous of popes in our lifetime. And I rest my case at that. We'll get back to this, believe me, over the coming weeks and months. And he'll be here soon, and you're not going to believe what you're about to see. So let's uh, go to some callers on this or other topics. Kevin's been holding on the issue of Syria and Russia. Kevin, line four, please make your point. Go ahead, please. Uh, yes, sir. I, uh, my point is, is I don't understand why people sit back and think that Russia is coming into Syria just to uphold Assad's uh, broken down regime. I think that's a pipe dream. Sounds to me like uh, straight out of Revelations. And as far as the Pope goes, what you were talking about sounds like... Wait, wait, let, let, let's stick to Syria because I think that the Syria-Russia thing is, the, is a change from the Pope. Would you have us go to war with Russia? Is that what you're suggesting? Uh, no, I, I, I don't think that... Oh, they, well, there's your, there's your answer. Obama's not going to go to war with Putin. You know, let's talk about Russia and Syria for a moment. One thing you can say about Mr. Putin is that he doesn't abandon his allies, unlike your leader, Barack Obama, who always abandons his allies. Obama has no character. He abandons his allies as quickly as a, a, a snake sheds his skin or as often as a snake sheds his skin. Putin knows that Syria is his ally, and they're not giving up the seaports that they built, and they're rebuilding right now, simply because Barack Obama wants them to go away. Now, that's that having been said, this is a very interesting puzzle that very few people have figured out, but I was onto this six months ago or nine months ago. I kept asking myself, why is ISIS allowed to build and rage? Why is the United States not taking ISIS out? Why is Jordan and Egypt? Why are they fighting ISIS and Obama will not give them heavy weapons? And the longer I thought about it, I was puzzled. I couldn't understand we'd let neo-Nazis like this. Nazis, you want to call them whatever you want. National socialism is the same as Islamofascism. When you think about it, just wrapped in a, in a headscarf. But it's no different than what Hitler did. Raping, murdering, pillaging, selling people on the auction block burning and, and, and looting and setting people afire a while they're alive, blowing up Palmyra, one of those wonders of the world, without a word from Jerry Brown. Worried about global warming, Jerry, are you? Why don't you talk about what your friends in ISIS uh, have done in Palmyra and what they're doing to churches, Jerry? Then I'll believe a word that comes out of your claptrap. Anyway, so we go back to Russia. So something you have to understand is ISIS is a factotum army of the United States and Israel. And I'm a supporter of Israel, but I'm sorry, Israel's all wrong. 
Israel made the calculation that they wouldn't have to lift a finger or fire a shot to take down Assad, their last great enemy in the Middle East, they